Question 4. DS. If X and Y are positive integers, are they consecutive? Condition 1. X minus Y equals 1. Condition 2. X plus Y equals 3. Solution. Now we will solve this DS question using the variable approach. Common mistake type 4B. If you get A or B as an answer too easily, then consider D. Let's apply the three steps suggested previously. Follow the first step of the variable approach by modifying and rechecking the original condition and the question. We have to find out whether X and Y are consecutive, if X and Y are positive integers. Let's look at the information from the question prompt, or the original condition. This is an integer question, and therefore one of the key questions. Consequently, we need to pay close attention to CMT 3 and 4. The answer to this question will be whether X and Y are consecutive, and therefore we also apply CMT 1 to this question. Follow the second and third steps. From the original condition, we have two variables, x and y. To match the number of variables with the number of equations, we need two equations. Since conditions 1 and 2 will provide one equation each, c would most likely be the answer. This is a perfect example of the type of questions which appeared on recent exams. The question looks easy, but it is actually quite difficult. You should be careful when you solve an integer question that seems simple. Recall three principles, choose C as the most likely answer. Let's take a look at both conditions together. x minus y equals 1, and x plus y equals 3. Adding the two equations, we get x minus y plus x plus y equals 1 plus 3. Combining like terms, we get 2 times x equals 4, or x equals 2. By substituting this into x plus y equals 3, we get 2 plus y equals 3, or y equals 1. So x equals 2 and y equals 1 are consecutive. Yes. And since the answer is unique, both conditions combined are sufficient according to CMT1, which means that the answer will be in terms of a unique yes or no. Thus, C seems to be the answer. However, since this is an integer question, we should apply CMT4A, which states if you get C as an answer too easily, then consider A or B as an answer. So, we have to consider each condition separately. Condition 1 tells us that x minus y equals 1. This tells us that y is 1 less than x, which means that they are consecutive. So, the condition is sufficient according to CMT1, which means that the answer will be in terms of a unique yes or no. Now, condition 1 seems pretty easy so we should look for CMT4B, which tells us that there is a greater probability that D is the answer. Therefore, let's look at condition 2. Condition 2 tells us that X plus Y equals 3. Now, both X and Y are positive integers, so the only possibility is that they are 1 and 2. Again, X and Y are consecutive and the condition is sufficient according to CMT1, which means that the answer will be in terms of a unique yes or no. This is a very difficult question. It makes you think that the condition is not sufficient because there are several answers in condition 2. But there is actually only one answer, which makes it sufficient. That's why CMT4B is important. CMT4B tells us that there is a greater probability that D is the answer when A or B is an answer in a key question. And tip 4 tells us that we cannot have a trivial answer, such as A in this case.
Always keep CMT4B in your mind when solving a question. That's important. The answer is D if condition 1 is easy and condition 2 is hard. Each condition alone is sufficient. So D is the correct answer. Answer D.